Right, welcome back everybody. Today we're taking a look at this little uh, Suffolk Punch uh, lawnmower. We did try and get this um, started in one of my dad's videos when we bought a load of them. Uh, and when we did try to start it, as you can hear, it sounds like the dog leg. Lucky enough, my mate Mick at Mick's Mowers, he's actually sent us a replacement one. Uh, you would have seen this on my dad's channel, he's actually sent me the whole... Oh, no, I forgot that was on there. He did brand it for me. So, yeah, if you haven't got Mick, there'll be a link in the description down below. But I thought it was generally just this bit I needed. But Mick says it could be in here wares as well. I don't know. I've not really worked on these engines before. So he sent me the whole package on that. So I appreciate that, Mick. Thank you. And as some of you might see now, I've got my own T-shirts done now. So I've got the Project Man logo on there. And it's also got the YouTube logo on the armband there. So, yeah, if you do want one of these... There'll be a link down in the description below for Stacey's page, EHO Designs. And in the future, there'll be an eBay store there as well. So, but yeah, if you if you don't want one of the Project Man ones, uh, just send Stacey a message. You can oh, get the yeah. Retro Restore, or you can have your own personal design on it. Whatever you want, we can put it on a t-shirt pretty much. So any queries, drop Stacey an email on the link down below. I just wanted to say, a big thank you to Sharon and Martin because um, I didn't have a clue about doing the t-shirts and stuff before they both started teaching me and they've been amazing. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you on Gary's video to Sharon and Martin. Thank you. I'm going now. Let's take a look at this mower and get this side casing off. Right, so before we take a quick look at this mower, I keep getting a lot of emails about this little um, 80s rally BMX here. Uh, people asking if I want to sell it. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I was thinking of doing it up myself for the channel, a bit of a channel project. Then I don't know whether to leave it as it is because it's it's a original bike from the 80s with its uh, marks over it, a bit of history on it, tells a story. Or do you go to Hog and uh, restore it? I mean, all the parts are readily available. The only thing I'm struggling to find is some uh, original grips. There are a couple of sets on eBay, but they're in no better condition than that. It's just where where kids have had it lent up brick walls in the past and they've fell, fallen off it and it's just slid down the road a bit. But otherwise, it's pretty much complete. It's, it's uh, You can't see much of the back end, but it's all there. It's all got all the brake mechanisms are all there, both levers. Still got the original uh, plastic seat there. So, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, everything's for sale. So if I do receive a, a decent offer on it, who knows, it might go. But otherwise, it'll be coming up on the channel. Anyway, enough of that. I'm starting to get a few mowers building up now. That's that front wheel drive one. I'm waiting on the belt to arrive for that. Otherwise, and that's uh, pretty much done then. I've just got to... Uh, get a winding handle just for here where I mentioned someone's put a cable tie through that one so then that will be done that one uh, got a Honda Izzy down there self drive it all works starts and drives as it should and uh, we've still got a few out there we've got a Honda not a Honda we've got a Hater 41 just needs a original set of rear wheels putting on it then we've got a couple of uh, cheapy ones over there so Plenty to be getting on with. Right then, so it's a 10mm socket to get these three bolts off. We're actually slamming it today, we're on the floor because I say I've got the still got the Yamaha phaser in here. I've got them lawnmowers on the ramp, so I thought we'd just do it here rather than uh, moving all that stuff out. <laughs> Yeah. Right, so that all seems to be working there. I'm just having a quick visual look to see if I can see anything out the ordinary. What looks to have happened is, you see this, these have actually worn down. 
which actually bite into they when they that spreads they spread like that and they catch in them grooves there and obviously over time they've just started wearing so oh the thought you can probably buy replacements of them legs so I'll just try and show you a comparison there so what we'll do first is I think we'll just try and stick this one straight on rather than changing all this uh, cup it seems to turn over nice and freely so we'll just uh, put that on there I'll leave the mix mowers sticker on there for now but if we can get this uh, going I'll probably uh, restore this one we'll strip it right down because it's all complete I've got the grass box just up the top there uh, everything's there what I've just noticed it don't look like there's an air filter on it so we might have to source an air filter from somewhere all right so I'm just going to give that a pull and see if them legs engage Right, well that's doing the same thing. It's not recoiling back in that, so they're getting jammed. So we'll have that back off again. And uh, we will just swap that cup out then. There we go. Yeah, they're just getting jammed, aren't they? So I'll take it, these have uh, worn as well, so we will just uh, replace that. We just get a flathead screwdriver. Right then, so we'll just undo these. Take that cup off. So someone must have been there before because it's missing the washer off on the back of one of them screws. So you can see that's been catched on the outer case in there. Look, it's actually all broken that. So we can do away with that one. We can get the replacement one. Just fit that in there. Get your screws. Get both of them lined up. And hopefully, this should solve our problem. I couldn't see much wear on that um, cup though. So we'll go back for a second line up. The washer's all back on. It will be nice to get this uh, mower running today. I'm not sure how old it is. I've had a look on the stickers. I can't see a, a year on it. There is probably a way of telling by the numbers. It probably will be stamped on the engine somewhere. But I haven't gone. Look, I just had a quick look over it, so. Right then, let's give it take two. It's still skipping. Still ripping them teeth. Right then, so it is a bit more further investigation on that because it shouldn't be doing that at all. So 
So possibly this one was still all right. The original one, but I say there is a bit of wear on them pins. You can see the metal's folded back on itself where it's worn. Right then, so we're back again. I just um, phoned up mixed mowers just to see if this was uh, coming off of a working machine before he sent it. And he said it was coming off a working machine, not a problem. Uh, he did actually cut me off though when I first phoned him. So I don't know what that was about. I think he must have pushed the wrong button. So let us know Mick, what happened there. But um, what Mick Wickeran did was uh, just take your cut back off again. And what he's done in the past is he's dropped the screws in and then come from behind and he's just packed it with a couple of washers just to bring this cup out a little bit for, far forward just to give us a bit more play on these plates so we're going to give that a go it makes sense what he's saying so just get that started off and then uh, do the same with the bottom one just uh, get the washers behind there that so we've got the washer so we wind that in oh, just nip them up so hopefully bringing this forward now we're giving these dog legs a bit more chance to bite in there so just try a couple of washers first to see if that makes a difference There we go. We'll stick our three washers back on down here. Right then, let's uh, give this a pull this time and see if it crunches. There we go. That's fair, isn't it? So, yeah, that has worked. Nice little hack there, Mick. Thank you very much. So what we'll do now is we'll drop a bit of petrol in it and uh, see if we can get the old girl fired up. Right, before I actually do put um, some fuel in it, we'll just spray a bit of uh, Easy Start down the plug just to see if we do get a fire before I start putting any petrol in the machine. So I'm just going to get my spark plug socket now, get that and a bit of Easy Start. Right then, so that plug's not even in tight, so we'll get that off. See what this plug's like. A bit of uh, crap around it, but nothing uh, to write home about. I'll give that a tickle. So it might not even have spark or anything, I don't know. I'm just going on what I was told that it was a runner, but maybe it was parked up because of that starting issue with the pull cord. Who knows? Right, so that's that. I'm just going to pull this back over here and get the mower on this bit of wood. Uh, stick it on max, maybe. Right, so there's no go there. Right, so there's no joy there on the fire, so... I've just put the plug there to uh, see if we've got a spark and there's no spark at all there. So I will just quickly try another plug on there. If not, it means we've got to strip all this down, uh, take a look at the coil. So let me just grab another plug just to eliminate the plug situation because then we're going to have to dig deeper in there.
Right, so I've popped another plug in there, brand new one. So let's give it a go. So there's nothing there at all. So it means we have to take all this uh, recoil off. We'll dig about in there, see what's going on. Uh, I might be able to clean some bits in there. So I'm just going to stick the old plug back in for now. Pop that up there. So we have managed to sort the recoil out now. So that's one part of it done. Right then, so because we've got no spark, what I'm going to quickly do now is I'm just going to whip this uh, cover off and uh, we'll take a look under there. There's actually four 10 mil bolts around it. So the bottom two, I'm just going to have to nip off with a, a spanner because we can't get the socket under there. So it's got a bit of a, I don't know what that is, looks like a bit of tree bark. So there you can see now how this mechanism works. Look. So when you pull it, then dog legs swing out. See how they're swinging out? And when they've sprung out, they actually catch on them grooves there on the cup, which in turn then spins the actual engine over. So, but I say on my original ones, these points is actually worn down. So we did need to change this anyway. So they all work as they should. Right, and as you can see there, a bit dark in there, but this is our point system in here. And... I'll be honest with you, I've never actually worked on a point system, so there we go, you can see in there. So all I know is that I've seen when people have done it in the past, they just clean the end of the points up, but I might get my old man at it just to give it a, a look. And then obviously when he's having a, having a look, he can tell me what needs to be done and the uh, I can learn that way then, so. But it all looks nice and clean in there. So, might have to whiz this off yet, because it could be a bit fiddly trying to get in there. So, let me just get the old man and I'll come back to you. Right then, so, my dad's been out and he's had a, a little look at that. We did actually open the gap a little bit. Uh, we did clean the points as well because there was a lot of crap that come off from as you can see there So we couldn't actually film that because we're just a bit tight for space in here But uh, the points have been set now and they've been cleaned So we'll stick it back together and see if we've got any spark from there If not, we'll have to dig a bit further and a bit more investigating So I'll come back to you once I've got this recoil back on Right, so we've put all that recoil cover back on now Just set up a temporary uh, fuel line on it And... Uh, We'll see if it goes. I think that's the. Uh, I've noticed it's missing the airbox. But... Right, so I think I believe that's choke on. But the the flaps closed. So that's choke on. The flaps it? closed. It's choke on. So temporary, temporary fuel line there because we don't know about that. Look how brittle this stuff is, folks. Look, just snaps in half. Look, look, absolutely useless. Look. That's it. You owe me a new fuel line now. <sighs> yeah, of course I do. Be interested to see first of all. If we've got a spark first, before we go any further, rather than try to get second out, get another spark, plug. it's sort of pulling this splitting neck off if you can't, if you ain't got a spark. Go on. I'm not seeing a spark. No. I'm not seeing a spark. Spark. So now it's time to get the bloody meter out and check things. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. So this is our coil. This is our wire to the points, and the other end goes to the HT lead. So they're the two outputs or the inputs to the coil. So when we put our ohm meter on the points points wire. And then down the chassis, it's a closed circuit, or a, it's like a, like a short, you could say. Those are the thick windings inside there. You've got two windings in there, one lot of thick windings, so there's hardly no resistance in them. 
Hence, we've got the look where it looks like a short there. And then the output, which is the one where you have the resistance on. This is the very fine winding, so it's a lot harder for current to go through the thin windings, and there's loads and loads of them. And you put that down to earth. And as you can see, we've got a reading of 13.02 uh, ohms there, which means that that coil was okay. But while we're also, we want to check the kill switch. The kill switch cable is the second cable which connects up to the back of your points. So if we hold that there, on there, and up on the switch, that's in the stop position. So basically, anywhere to chassis, this should earth down to chassis on the engine there, which it is doing now. And when he moves the switch up there, to the open position, to run, then it open circuit, so the car, the, the engine will run. So put it back on the stop again. Right, so he's just put that back on the stop, but it's not done it this time. The reason being is that that cable comes up here, connects onto that ground part there, which operates by the throttle, and opens and shut that contact point there. Can you see that opening and shutting? Yeah. And basically, there's crap in there, so this could have trouble turning off because it's not always making the ground connection now to activate the switch to turn it off. So that needs a good clean as well. But the reason why our thing isn't starting at the moment doesn't appear to be the coils. I can't see a condenser unit on here. Maybe it's got one built in, or I don't know, I'm not too sure. It doesn't appear to be a condenser unit, as I can see here. So all we can check now is if the points are making contact by just rotating the crank a bit till they do make a contact, they're closed now. And either side of the points, that should short out, which it is. So the points are making a contact there. So that tells me that the points are working. And if I open the points by just turning the crank, right, the lobe is there. So if I put that lobe there, the highest point there, you can't see that lobe, but that little bit there is rubbing it. It's on the high point. So we've got a gap there now, and that should be open circuit now. As you can see there open circuit so the points are actually working so yeah we've just checked the coil out the coil checks out to be okay but if the coil is okay and the cables are okay which they prove they, they seem to be the other problem is, is it isn't picking up its earth through the chassis when it bolts to the chassis and if we look at the state of the screws there they're all carboned up now that gets its earth through the chassis via these two screws there as you can see there so what we've got to do is give them screws a good clean out, give the threads a good clean out, and uh, maybe then we, we, we'll try again to see if we're picking up the earth through the chassis, because that could be the problem. Right, so we've cleaned up the surface of the post there, we've also cleaned up the threads there, and we've also cleaned up the uh, threads as well there. We've also cleaned up the back of the post, which were fully rusty as well, that would have ensured they weren't making a good connection. So we're going to put this back on, and hope that we may have cured the problem. Right, our two cables get connected back up to our insulated plate. One being the kill switch cable and the other one being the trigger cable from the coil. Right, so that's all connected back up. And our points have been adjusted. So what we're going to do now, put a flywheel on and uh, give it a go. Right, all back together now. We've just connected up the uh, plug cap on the plug lead. You got that there? I'll spin the engine over now with the battery drill just to see if we've got a spark. See it? Can't see it on camera, but yeah, it's there. Uh, so there's a spark there, I'll see it every spark. Brilliant. There we go, happy days. Now we can put some fuel in it, put the spark plug in and see if we can get it started. You don't know whether the carbs on you haven't done nothing to the carb yet, have you? Not done nothing. Oh, loads of fuel coming out. There's fuel got in there. Is there? Alright. Don't know whether it's sparking or not. Oh, it's not sparking. Getting fuel. Getting fuel, so we just put a bit of easy start up through the uh the main jet might be blocked, you see. I'm gonna open that carb up. Choke up, brother. Right. 
got it. Here we go. So it's a carb job. We sorted the spark issue out now. The thing runs. The reason why it ain't starting off with the fuel is because the carb shop dropped. A rock. Probably the main jet. I can leave that to you. Perfect. My job is done. Right then, so we're going to leave that here for this little one. Little stop one? It, stop, stop it there, look. Let's take me blinking out to sort that out. So yeah, so we've had the, we've sorted the recoil issue out, so that's all pulling as it should now. And then we obviously found the issue with the spark, so we've done a bit of a... We, I love the we. Well, hey? he, he done it and I was watching to learn, so... Have you learnt anything? Well, we'll soon know when I get another one in. If I get another one in. So you've got a fuel line to go in there as well, because that's my temporary... Uh, there, Andy, folks, as you can see, the temporary uh, fuel things. I think they're only cheap on uh, Amazon. So you never know the state of the, what's in the tanks, do you? Not a lot in this one. Well, obviously not. Right, you did put petrol in there, didn't you? We did when we, on your last video, and it was gone. But yeah, so obviously that's leaked out. Maybe. Well, you know it runs now anyway. So we see it run. Well, fire up. I'll go in. He's off. So yeah, there will be another video on it where we'll take this carb off, give it a good strip down, and. Uh, Hopefully we can get the mower going and we'll give it a test ride up the garden and all being well then this one will get a full strip down restoration where we'll fully strip it down and get all these parts powder coated in the powder coating oven there and hopefully it'll be a nice little mower for someone then. I don't think we'll keep it. I think it'll just be a, a sell on job to someone because we, we ain't got the space to keep holding things. So we're going to leave it here and also, don't forget, if you do want any of the merchandise, there will be a link down below for Stacey's EHO Designs Facebook page and the eBay shop. I say the eBay shop, uh, there is not a lot of stuff on there. At the There's only a couple of three or four items on there. There is this on there at the minute. Anyway, until next time, we'll see you about. Mm -hmm.